Okay, so today we're going to finish off section 8.1, but we're going to focus on sales tax and discounts today. All right, so first, if we're talking about sales tax, it's a percentage of the cost of an item that gets added to your bill to be paid to a state, city, county, etc. So, you know, whenever you go to a store, you pay sales tax. So how do you determine sales tax? Well, sales tax is the tax rate times the item's cost. Now keep in mind, this tax rate is the <clears throat> percent as a decimal, okay? All right, so if we get right into our first example, a computer is purchased for $1,025. Let's compare the amount of tax paid if the sales tax rate is 3% versus 5%. So if it's 3%, remember we would write that as 0 0.03 times the item's cost, which is 1,025, and we get $30.75 if you plug that into your calculator. Versus if it's 5%, 0 0.05 times 1025 would give us 51.25%. So obviously we want to shop where there are lower sales tax. Okay, so then what's the total cost of the computer if the sales tax is 6.25%? Well, we can figure out the tax amount on this. So we take that sales or that tax rate, right? Write it as a decimal, 0 0.0625 times 1025, and we get $64.06 as the sales tax. But to figure out the total cost, we then have to add that to the item's cost. So 1025 plus 6406, and we get the total cost that we are paying is going to be $1,089.06. Now, another way we could think about this and figure out the total cost of an item is instead of multiplying by or figuring out the sales tax individually, we can think about it as paying 100, or sorry, yeah, paying 100. 6.25% of that total, of the, the item's cost, okay? So if we write this as our rate, right, then we would just have to multiply that by the item's cost, and we get the total cost of that item. So that's just another way you can look at it. Now let's talk discount. So what is a discount? A discount is an amount of, or a percentage of the cost of an item that gets subtracted from your bill. So sales tax gets added to your bill, discounts get subtracted. So a discount amount is the discount rate times the item's original cost. So it's the same as figuring out how much the sales tax is going to be, okay? But this time we're subtracting it from the total amount. All right, so uh, the computer still costs 1025. It's on sale for 15% off. So what's the discount amount? Well, we take that 15%, we write it as a decimal, 0 0.15 times 1025, and we get $153.75. So that's how much I'm taking off of the total cost. So what is the computer sale price? Well, the sale price is the original cost minus our discount. So our original cost was 1025, our discount was 153.75, so we do that subtraction and we get $871.25. That's what we're paying, um, but we're not taking into account any sales tax, okay? Um, or another way we can think about it is we are really just paying 85% of the original cost. So we could just say, well, the sale price is 0.85 times 1025, and you get the same value um, from what we did over on the left here. Just a different way to go through it. Okay, now let's suppose, what would the price be if we were discounted 15% and then 15% of the new price was added? Okay, so our sale price with that 15% discount was $871.25. We found that from above. Now we want to add 15% to that. So we're going to take what our, our price was, right? And we're going to add that sales or that 15% to it. So 15.15 times 871.25, okay? Because this is that adding 15% to that price. And we are, to, we are up to $1,001 and if we rounded, 94 cents. So what do we notice is 
before I took 15% off, but then I added 15% back, right? But I'm not back up to the original price. Why is that? It's because we are taking 15% of a different value this time, okay? So that's why we need to be careful when we're computing these discounts or these percentages, okay? So that leads us into this next example here. We wanna be careful when we hear percents, okay? You should always ask percent of what? In 7C, the 15% was computed from two different amounts, which is why we did not end up back at the starting amount of $1,025. This is different from subtracting $15 and then adding $15, which would make us end back at the starting amount, okay? So um, taking percentages of things is a lot different than just subtracting and adding. So let's just look at this again from an easier number standpoint. If we take 20% off of 100, well, that's 100 times 0.2. So that just gives us $20, okay? Um, and we subtract that from 100, we're at $80. So um, if we take 20% off, we are at $80. If we take 10% off of the number you found in A, so 10% of 80 is eight, and if we subtract that from 80, we get $72. Now let's go back. If we take 30% off of 100, where are we? Well, 100 minus um, 0.3 times 100 is $70. Now keep in mind, in A, we took 20% off. In B, we took 10% off. Is that really taking 30% off of the original? No, okay, it's not the same. So we're taking the percent of two different values. So we can't just say, oh, well, I took 20% off the first time and then I took 10% off. So total, I took 30% off. That is not how it works, okay? Because we're taking percentages of different values. So it changes the game. Now we're gonna focus on calculating percent increase and percent decrease. So let's go back to the original from the previous video. At the start of these notes, uh, Illinois lawmakers pass a 67% tax hike. So if the current tax rate is 3%, does that mean the new tax rate is 70%? Thankfully, no. In this case, they are talking about percentage change in the percent, okay? So you have to really understand what percentage represents. So if a weight increased from eight pounds to 12 pounds, we would describe the increase two different ways. One way describes what needs to be added to the original, and one way describes what we need to multiply to the original. So to get from eight pounds to 12 pounds, we would need to add four pounds. So we could say they, there was a four pound increase. To get from eight pounds to 12 pounds, we could also multiply by 1.5. So if eight pounds represents 100% of something, then 12 pounds would represent 150% of something, because 1.5 as a percentage. So we could say that the percentage increase in the weight was 50%. Because the original numbers are in pounds, it's obvious what type of increase we are talking about, whether it is 50 pounds or 50, four pounds or 50%. Where this gets confusing is when the numbers that you are comparing are percentages themselves. So for instance, if a tax rate increased from 3% to 5%, we could also describe that increase two different ways. One way describes what needs to be added and one way describes what we would need to multiply to the original by. So to get from three to 5%, we could add 2%. So we could say the percentage rate increased by 2%. Or to get from 3% to 5%, we could also multiply by 1.67, okay? So if 3% was really 100% of something, then 5% would really represent 167% of something. So we could also say that the percentage increase in the percentage was 67%. So which of the above numbers makes more or for more a start, startling headline to the public, which is what the newspapers are probably going to use, right? So the headline said, Illinois lawmakers pass a 67% tax hike. They're really referring to a percentage increase in the percentage, not just an increase in the percentage. So we have to understand that aspect. So that leads us to percent increase or percent decrease. 
All right, so if we're trying to calculate the percent increase or the percent decrease, we would take the amount of increase over the original amount, and we would set that equal to x over 100. This is our percent, okay? Or the amount decrease over the original amount and set that equal to x over 100. So for instance, a salary increases from $30,000 to $31,500. What percent increase is this? So what is the amount increase? Well, we go from 30,000 to 31,500. So that's gonna be $1,500 increase. What's the original uh, salary? $30,000. So we set that equal to X over 100, and we cross multiply and we solve, and we get X equals five. So what's our interpretation? It was a 5% increase. Okay, now I want you to work backwards. I want you to figure out, okay, well, what if the salary decreases from 31,500 to 30,000? What percent decrease is this? Is it gonna be 5%? Let's see, okay? So now we're looking at decrease. So what's the amount decrease? Well, we started at 31,500 and we went to 30,000. So that's still 1,500, okay? But what's the original? The original this time, they started at 31,500. So that changes, okay? So now we go ahead, we cross multiply and we get X to be uh, 4.76. So what this really means is it's a 4.76% decrease. Again, it's all about what we started at. So now let's go back to that 3% to 5%, okay? And let's talk about the percent increase and the percent for tax rates, okay? So if we wanna talk about increase, remember it's, it's the amount um, of increase so we go from 3% to 5%. So the amount increase is two. What did we start with? We started at three, okay? So we set that equal to X over 100. We cross multiply and we get X is equal to 66.67. So this means it increased by 66.67%, okay? We're gonna finish the rest of these two examples in class next time we meet. So hang on tight and we'll finish it later.